Hello and welcome to the Learning to Be Human podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Linkenbach, and on this podcast, we dive into all sorts of topics such as how do we find meaning in life? How do we navigate our emotions? What does it mean to have a human experience? And in today's episode, we do dive into meaninglessness and finding meaning in life. And before we begin, I have a quote here. It's actually a poem by Robert Bly, who my mother actually got to interview when she was in college doing some research. And so I have a cool little connection to Robert, and he has uh, influenced me and uh, really helped me to better understand my own internal wounds. So uh, he's someone who has a special place in my heart. And so this poem comes from The Teeth Mother Naked at last. That is the title of the poem. Many of us die in the search for something we can never find, although it's there all the time. But there is something more terrible than dying for something that's always within reach. It's when losing all appetite for living or dying, we find ourselves alone and desperate, stripped of all that seemed to us enchanting. And so with that, let us begin. So first things first, When somebody comes into a therapeutic container, there's a bunch of different reasons that they may be going through. Maybe their marriage is not working out very well, or they're dealing with grief from a loved one, or not very satisfied at their job. And one of the main reasons that somebody comes into a therapeutic setting is typically uh, they're feeling some kind of depression or anxiety in life. Um, And as we dive deeper into that depression, we can begin to realize that accompanying that feeling of depression is usually a sense of feeling disconnected from the world in some way. Uh, And a phrase that gets thrown around quite often is, I don't feel connected to my purpose. I don't feel I have a sense of purpose in the world. And I want to dive a little bit deeper into even what purpose is, right? Because when we think of an object serving a purpose, we think of it in in terms of it fulfilling a role in order for something, some sort of facilitation to happen. So let's take a hammer, for example. That hammer has a purpose of doing a specific task, of hitting uh, a nail on the head and you know placing a board to another board or whatever the specific task is. And so that hammer has served its purpose. It has a purpose in that sense. And the thing that gets really interesting with human beings is all of a sudden we start to look at the human being as this object. And this actually goes a little bit into uh, Kantian ethics when we start looking at what a human being is. And one of the main aspects of Kant's philosophy was that human beings are not a means to an end. And what that essentially means is we, we're not going to use human beings in order to uh, have a desired outcome, right? Uh, a specific example is slavery, right? We're not going to use a uh, form of slavery to have something built. Humans are not a means in order to have something else done. And we see that today in our sort of self-prioritized capitalist, capitalistic nature. That's a difficult word. Capitalistic nature that the human being is incentivized to use other people for their own gains, right? It's kind of a narcissistic behavior. And what's interesting is that in our economic model at the moment, that kind of behavior is actually rewarded by more money, which is sort of an interesting plan. I'm not saying that earning money is bad. I'm just saying that in our society, we have sort of culturally prioritized the behaviors of a narcissist in order to um, perhaps justify the idea of making uh, money at the cost of human expense, which is absolutely wild. I'm going to take a little sip of my coffee here. Maybe you can hear this in the mic. Ready? How was that? Was that a good little ASMR for you? Anyways, the uh, point I'm trying to make here is that the sense of purpose concept is kind of like, I don't feel like I have my purpose. And what people, I think there's an illusion that there's like this one sense of purpose, that there's like this one vocation that we're supposed to fall into and find. And that is sort of 
the way of thinking, I think of my um, grandfather's generation. He had a job when he was 25 and he worked until he retired and he got his pension and then he was out. And I just don't know if that way of being serves us anymore. Like, I don't think that there is a sense of purpose in the essence that we serve one purpose, our life, and then it is over. Um, I think it's also a little cliche, and, but also valid to hear that we, we serve multiple purposes per, per pie. And we allow, um, I'm sorry, I'm just still perplexed by per pie, purposes per pie. I don't know what the plural is there. And we have this sort of um, sense that we need to find our purpose in order to feel that we have a sense of wholeness in a way. And I want to just kind of poke at that a little bit and offer an alternative, which is that uh, that sense of purpose is really just a sense of disconnect if we look at it. Um, and I don't necessarily know if doing a certain modality is going to fix a hole inside of us. Granted, it may help in a sense of fulfillment, but you know, let's say you get into healing work or you get into a work that fulfills you, then you, while you're with a client, you may feel fulfilled and in, in that space of service. But if you're not also cultivating that sense of connectedness in times when you're not serving a purpose, um, then there will still be that disconnect. And essentially what the objective here is, is to learn how to, to be, just learn how to breathe and to just be in this moment and feeling your body. Like even right now, I'm, I'm tapping into my body and I'm just feeling my stomach and my heart beating and just noticing my breathing and the pace of which things are moving in my body and it slows me down and it allows me to disconnect from the disconnect it allows me to reconnect and i think that that's really what we're looking for in this sort of purpose now in terms of seeking vocation that's fulfilling or in terms of finding ways to serve others. I think that's a completely different conversation, but I think first and foremost, it's important to find that state of connection before going out and seeking something. Otherwise, we're going to be trying to seek something in order to fill something. And I just think that that is the cycle that we began with in the first place that's going to just keep us in that loop. So it's turning inward and going inside. Now, uh, something that I have found that has really helped me with my own sense of finding purpose and meaning in life um, is the act of creation. And I don't necessarily mean by just taking action like the uh, Tony Robbins sort of take massive action, although, um, you know, there could be a little validity in that. I do think it more so is in the lines of the creative expression. And what I mean by that is that in that creativity, there is a connection to a deeper power, a, a source of libido, uh, as Carl Jung would say. And um, this is something that my therapist, Dr. Robert Baer, actually talks about uh, in his book, The Creative Fire, which is that uh, creativity is not a byproduct of a fulfilling life. Uh, creativity is the way to a fulfilling life. And essentially what the concept is is that when we are opening ourselves up to creativity, we are opening ourselves up to libido, to source energy, to a healing power, which then is channeled through us and gives us, um, yeah, it, it gives us healing. It gives us a sense of fulfillment. It gives us a sense of connection to the world. And so creativity becomes an act of, allowing this energy to move through our body. I know that sounds very woo woo and out there, but at the same time, uh, opening ourselves up to creativity, I know that when I am feeling most alive is, for instance, right now in this podcast, when I'm creating something, when I'm writing, uh, when I'm dancing, when I'm painting something, that creativity gets to start flowing through me and I just kind of become present with the moment again and it just like settles things in. And so 
perhaps that is one little bit of a, a little helpful hint is to start is that if you feel a sense of meaningless in your life, start creating something. Um, and I think that that meaninglessness is actually important uh, because it takes us into some deeper questions. I think that that sense of meaninglessness is actually a necessity in our lives because it starts challenging us. What is my place in the world? What am I here to do? What is my role to serve? These are all extremely important questions. Uh, and it's important it is important to get in touch with that because it's self-awareness, right? It's the awareness of the self. And so thank you all so much for tuning in. If you need help with any of this, I am a coach and happy to help you to find meaning in your life. Feel free to schedule a free consultation down in the link below and I'll catch you all next time. All right. Take care.